The movie begins with a group of teenage friends named Victor, Lex, Scott, and Nick hanging out. They are doing the Charlie challenge when one of the friends tells them to spice it up a bit. He takes out a play named The Gallows from under the table and mysteriously mentions they should try doing a different version of the Charlie Charlie challenge. In this version, they have Victor read from The Gallows. This play is linked to a high school student, Charlie Grimmel's mysterious demise. The boy tells them how his spirit started posing up everywhere after his demise. The group quickly perks up, hearing this and they decide to do this while going live. Lex quickly goes live on her phone as they start the ritual in Marcus's basement. Victor starts narrating the play and weird creepy stuff starts happening. As the boy reads the name August Benjamin Rutherford, lights start to flicker all around them. Scott is freaked out. He tells Victor to stop whatever he is doing but creepily enough, poor Victor is doing nothing. Strange things that can't be explained happen around them, making them feel like something paranormal is going on. All of a sudden, a huge object is hurled at them. They whip around to find a silhouette standing at the door of the basement. The group shouts at the figure, calling him Marcus. They relax a bit and quickly slip out of the basement, cursing Marcus for freaking them out. Poor Marcus keeps on denying the accusations but nobody pays him any heat. Later that night, Victor enters the kitchen and finds it totally trashed. He looks around but is unable to spot Marcus anywhere. Searching for the little boy, he goes to the basement door. Opening it, he calls out but the boy seems to be found nowhere. He rushes upstairs. As he is looking around, he hears the swing downstairs moving. Looking down from the windows, he finds Marcus outside. He rushes out and discovers Marcus riding the swing with his back to him. Victor calls out to the boy but gets no response. Lying near the swing set is the same play that they were reading down in the basement. All of a sudden, he feels someone watching them. Looking into the distance, he feels a figure watching them while hiding behind the bushes. He squints, trying to see clearly but his concentration is shattered when all of a sudden, he discovers something horrific. Marcus is no longer riding the swing but rather it looks like he's been using chains from the swing set. This chilling turn of events leaves him terrified and confused. With a shriek, he turns around and tries to run but the horror doesn't stop there. Suddenly, a chain from the swing set somehow wraps itself around his neck, strangling him. He desperately tries to free himself but to no avail. Just then, a mysterious figure materializes before him and the screen turns black. The whole situation turns into a nightmare as poor Victor realizes that they might be facing something beyond his understanding. The scene shifts, and we see an aspiring actress named Anna Rue, who is recording a new video for her YouTube channel. In the video, she talks about how she is moving in with her sister Lisa. Their new place is in the vicinity of Felbrook High School, which Anna would be attending. She talks excitedly about it and tells her viewers that it is known for its outstanding drama program. She puts up the video on her channel for her 200 followers who soon come down to 198, making the poor girl sad. Later, she finally comes to her sister's place and sees all the mess around the house. Lisa crafts props and dresses, thus, there are mannequins and stuff sprawled everywhere. Still, Anna manages to keep her cheerful personality and greets her sister enthusiastically. Lisa looks like a very busy person. She keeps getting calls. After a while, she tells Anna that since her big show is coming up, she would be staying at the studio for a while so, Anna will be having the entire house to herself. The girl tries to look happy about it but it is rather obvious how sad she is. Who wouldn't be when you just move in with your sister and get such a warm welcome? The next day, Anna starts school. She is excited to the brim. The thought of excelling in her acting and making it big almost fills her heart to the brim. After taking her class schedule, she eagerly enters and participates in the class. But things start off a bit shaky for Anna when she ends up getting nervous during the monologue. The class pays no attention to her recital and poor Anna keeps getting flashbacks of her neglected childhood. All this is witnessed by a boy named Cade Parker, who had just been passing by the door. Meanwhile, inside, seeing this, Mr. Schlick stops her and tells her to revisit the material and do it another time. Disheartened, poor Anna cries in the bathroom later. To lift up her spirits, she rewatches her favorite movie and goes out to have lunch. After eating, she sees a poor boy being Anna gets angry and goes to give him a hand. Cade, who is sitting with his friends another corner witnesses this and is more intrigued by her. As she is about to leave, he approaches her and they exchange names. Anna's mood lift up a bit after this cheerful interaction. Later, we see Anna navigating her online channel. All of a sudden, she gets a message from an anonymous person. A user named, Almost Famous 99, texts her on her less known YouTube channel. The user tells her how he likes her videos and is a fan of her contagious smile. After wooing her, this user introduces Anna to a viral video by Victor where he supposedly summons eerie happenings by delving into the gallows. Since Anna once did a Ouija video, he suggests that she should try doing this one too. She watches the video and after seeing the views, she is immediately interested. Intrigued, Anna dives deeper into the mystery surrounding the gallows. She manages to get her hands on a copy of the play from the school library. But strangely, her interest in the play turns into an unusual fixation. She loses track of time as she delves into the play. By the time everyone leaves, the librarian arrives and snaps her out of it. She sees her phone and is worried when she sees tons of messages and calls from her sister. She rushes out to find Lisa waiting for her. She gets a little angry at Anna but soon forgives her. Back at home, driven by this newfound obsession, Anna decides to record herself while reading from the gallows. She shares the video online. 
exposing herself further to the eerie forces associated with the play. The next morning, they wake up to find Lisa's spirit protection statue disappearing overnight. Back at school, she keeps getting distracted by the play and by the time of the theater class, she decides to give another shot at monologue. It seems as though she is possessed by something when she narrates the paragraph from the gallows. Anna's fortunes take a turn for the better as she becomes the talk of Mr. Schlake's class with her mesmerizing performance. After class, she bumps into Kate who invites her on a date the next day. As they exchange numbers, she notices notifications from her YouTube channel pop up. Excited, she rushes back home to find her video has blown up online. Her channel becomes a hot topic as viewers spot a table moving mysteriously in the background of her video. This unexpected occurrence propels Anna's video to new heights of popularity, capturing the attention of a wider audience. She rewatches the video and sure enough, the table moves in the background. Riding on this wave of newfound fame, Anna decides to take things further. She sets a vase on the same table that moved the other day. As she records a second reading from the gallows, she keeps watching the table but nothing happens. Finally, deciding to give up, she moves to turn off the recording but this time, something even more bizarre happens. Her lamp unexpectedly flies across her bedroom and smashes onto the door. Shocked, she stops moving for a while but soon gets delighted. She is over the top, thinking that she would be more famous on YouTube now when she should be worried about the evil spirit. The next day, Lisa gets a call from her mother while she is working in her studio. She sounds worried as she tells Lisa about Anna's recent videos. Lisa pulls up the videos and is shocked at the scene, but she consoles her mother telling her that she would talk to Anna herself. In the meantime, Anna is on the ice cream date with Kate. There, they bond and learn more about each other. Anna tells him how it has been her dream to become an actress ever since she was little, but nobody really understood her. Later, Kate introduces Anna to his parents, who happen to be none other than the renowned actors Craig and Kate Parker. She also learns how Kate also debuted as an actor in a season. On their way back, they make a stop at a gas station. Kate goes to fetch something from the shop while Anna stays in the car. However, a sense of unease creeps in when Anna experiences a spine-chilling moment. While Anna is looking at herself through the visor mirror, a fleeting glimpse of a person in the mirror sends shivers down her spine. She is startled. Anna whips around to check but finds no one there. This leaves her unsettled and anxious. While she is trying hard to compose herself, a knock on the car window leaves her startled once more. Looking out, she finds two cute girls. They happen to have recognized her as the famous YouTuber who makes Charlie Challenge videos. After taking pictures, they leave, but not before telling her how lucky she is that Charlie has chosen her. This statement leaves her quite puzzled. Back at home, Lisa goes to Anna's room to put her charger back and sees the play that she has been reciting. Shortly after, Anna also comes back home. As if the unsettling occurrences weren't enough, another message from Almost Famous 99 redirects Anna to a fan page dedicated to the Charlie Challenge, further intertwining her life with the horror. As Anna delves deeper into her investigation, she stumbles upon chilling content online. While browsing through videos of and paranormal activities, she uncovers the disturbing story of Charlie Grimmel, who was a student at Beatrice High, and passed away on stage. She also sees pictures of Scott and Lex posted there with questions regarding their whereabouts. It seems that after recording their Charlie Challenge video, they have disappeared. There is a picture of her posted there as well. It's during this unsettling exploration that Anna catches a brief, bone-chilling glimpse of the hangman lurking in the shadows of her closet door in the picture. This horrifying appearance sends shivers down her spine. Before she can calm her nerves, Behind her, her closet door creaks. She goes to investigate but sees nothing inside. As she turns around, the door bangs shut and her hand gets caught in the middle. Her fingers throb as she goes to fetch the first aid kit. After she tends to her wounds, a sudden chill spreads throughout the air. Trembling, she feels the hangman standing behind her. Slowly she turns around but there seems to be no one there. She calms down a bit but soon her heart rate picks up after she sees the footprints marking the floor. She follows them to the kitchen. There she sees a shadow and praying to Lord that it be Lisa, calls out to her sister. The shadow creeps to the other side and disappears. Slowly Anna enters the kitchen and is startled after she bumps into Lisa. Bending down, she traces the place where the footprints were previously. The sisters then get into an argument and both go back to their respective rooms. The next day, Anna has a terrible vision regarding the hangman and tries to talk her teacher into letting them select another play. But it seems that everyone has simultaneously agreed to act out the gallows after watching her monologue. Later, she goes to a party with Kate. They sneak off to a treehouse and spend some intimate time together. There, the situation escalates when Anna experiences a haunting vision. She sees the hangman in a terrifying scene where he appears to be attacking Kate, leaving her deeply disturbed and frightened. As she comes back to her senses, she asks him to immediately drop her back home. Back at home, a disturbed Lisa is sewing a dress when all of a sudden, the TV starts playing on its own. Distracted, she accidentally hurts herself with the needle. Hurt, she goes to fetch the first aid kit. While she is tending to her wound, the terrifying hangman creeps up on her. Startled, she whips around but finds no one. However, she sees a suspicious statue standing nearby and slowly approaches it. Mustering up her courage, she removes its head cover and cowers back in fear after seeing its terrifying face. 
right that moment. Anna comes back home and poor Lisa does a double take, scared once more. Anna goes to her room, and Lisa turns to look at the terrifying statue but it is nowhere to be found. Despite her growing unease, Anna finds herself caught in a complex web of emotions. Although she expresses her reluctance to Mr. Schlake about continuing with readings from the gala, she eventually succumbs to the pressure and still recites a monologue from the play, seemingly unable to break away completely. Adding to her distress, Anna stumbles upon distressing confessional videos posted by Lex, a friend of Victor's. These videos reveal shocking revelations, including a disfiguring mark on Lex's neck, intensifying Anna's sense of foreboding and plunging her further into the darkness. She starts getting sleepless. When Cade tries approaching her, she ignores him too. Back at home, the situation takes a darker turn when almost famous 99's messages take on a taunting and unsettling tone, prompting Anna to block the user. She feels increasingly disturbed by the unwanted attention and its sinister undertones. Back at school the next day, Anna finds herself dozing off. Seeing it, the teacher asks her to recite the para from the book. As she reads, she finds the words changing and turning into the play that she is desperately running from. The entire class looks at her funny as she reads incorrectly. The teacher asks her to read another portion. This time when she looks down, she finds the play in her hands. A strange hand extends from the book, grabbing her neck. Startled, she shouts and moves back. Rushing to the washroom, she sees the same mark on her neck that Lex had. Desperate to free herself from the clutches of this evil, she throws away the play and sticks patches on her neck to hide the mark. The next day, she gives another try to change the monologue. After her performance, the teacher praises her and looks relieved that she finally decided to stick with the gallows. Hearing this, she is terrified because that play that she thought she recited was definitely not it. Back at home, a series of grim and horrifying events unfold, plunging Anna and her sister Lisa into a nightmarish ordeal. It begins when Lisa hears the washroom door creep open while she is taking a shower. She calls out to Anna but after getting no response, gets out of the shower. Stepping out, she feels a strange rope lying on the floor. She follows it to discover her blissly from a tree outside their home. This situation sends shockwaves of horror through the poor girl. They call the police who inform animal control. Lisa is crying in the living room as Anna approaches her. She sees the rope lying nearby and is unable to console her sister. The girl gets up gingerly to leave, but Lisa quickly approaches her. The crying woman finally hugs her sister and they spend a moment of respite in this tense situation. While they are hugging, out of nowhere, the play materializes in Anna's hands. Seeing this, Lisa angrily grabs it and rips it to shreds. This leads to a tense confrontation between Lisa and Anna, as Lisa snaps at her sister, telling her that she should give up her dream of becoming an actress, because she can never become one. The gravity of the situation weighs heavily upon them both. The next day, Anna desperately searches for a way to stop the Charlie challenge. Amidst her search, her laptop is hacked by Almost Famous 99. The same fan page opens once more and there, she reads the paragraph about how to stop the challenge. It turns out that in order to stop the hauntings, she would need to act out the entire play as a willing She angrily replies to the mysterious user, asking what the hell he wants from her. The user merely replies that she need not fret as it will all end soon enough. All of a sudden, a window pops up on her screen. She watches Lex, deeply troubled and on the brink of self preparing to during a livestream. Desperate, Anna tries to stop the impending tragedy. However, her efforts tragically fall short, and it appears that the hangman, the ominous figure lurking in the shadows, claims Lex's life in a horrifying way. Just then she catches a glimpse of almost famous 99 through the computer lab window when he texts him. Taking her belongings, she rushes after him but soon loses sight of him. Outside school, as Anna bends down to pick up her phone, he turns around and we see that he is none other than Dane's friend. Afterwards, Anna goes to her audition. Although she is initially unwilling, soon she takes up the stage and everyone is awed by her incredible performance. Mr. Scott offers her to attend NYU on a full scholarship next year. While she is talking to him in private, she once again sees a horrifying vision where the man is attacked by the hangman, but it all turns out to be just a vision. Back at home, Lisa leaves a voicemail for Anna apologizing for the way she talked and wishing her luck on her upcoming audition. Then, she packs her bag and is about to leave out the door when she notices the bag disappear from her hand. Looking back, she finds it lying open behind her. The lace that she just packed up also appears back, dangling around her neck. The atmosphere turns creepy and the sense of intensifies as all of a sudden everything around her breaks apart. Chaos ensues and poor Lisa shrieks with fright. She attempts to distance herself from the escalating horrors. But before she can escape, the hangman appears, shattering any hope of safety. She musters up her courage and grabs a piece of wood. Wielding it as a weapon, she demands from the evil entity whatever the hell it wants. Slowly she approaches it but it vanishes and reappears just behind her. In a terrifying confrontation, the hangman brutally strangles Lisa, extinguishing her life in a chilling and horrific manner. Back on the other side, Kate delves deeper into the disturbing events surrounding Beatrice High School. He uncovers an article hinting at a chilling possibility that saying the name of Charlie Grimmel might summon the very character 
the hangman that Charlie was meant to portray in the gallows. He sees the video where the authorities arrest Fafer Ross, Charlie Grimmel's disturbed daughter, and her mother, linking them to the unsettling incidents. While they were making the arrest, supernatural phenomena were recorded. It's revealed that both women were confined to a nearby mental hospital, shedding light on the tragic history that seems to be at the core of the haunting occurrences. In the meantime, back at home, Anna keeps getting messages from Almost Famous 99. This man is provoking her to complete the perfect Charlie challenge. He sends her pictures of gallows that he is building for her. Seeing this, Anna freaks out and slams her laptop on the wall. While she is crying, she gets a call from Cade. He consoles her a bit, lifting her spirits. In an attempt to find a way to put an end to the hangman's curse, Cade takes a hopeful step by bringing Anna along to visit Fafer. They hope that she might hold the key to stopping the malevolent force. However, the encounter takes a terrifying turn when Fafer claims that the only way to appease the hangman is by offering a willing sack to be slayed. This horrifying revelation sends shivers down their spines. All of a sudden, the woman attacks Anna, screaming that the hangman wants her and he would come get her. They rush out of there. Outside, Kate hugs Anna, telling her that he would not let anything bad happen to her. Feeling comforted, she decides to delete her YouTube account, the very source of her nightmares. As they are about to get inside the car, events take a terrifying turn. Both Kate and Anna are suddenly abducted from outside the asylum. Coming back to their senses, they find themselves thrust into a nightmarish scenario in a forest. Someone drags them as they shout out to each other. Once the cloth covering their heads is removed, they find themselves standing on a gallows with nooses ominously hanging around their necks. The dread-inducing presence of the hangman materializes before them, accompanied by a hooded executioner, creating an atmosphere filled with an impending doom. The duo is confronted with an impossible and horrifying choice. They must decide amongst themselves who will be the facing a grim and agonizing dilemma with their lives hanging in the balance. In a heart-wrenching moment, before Anna can intervene, Kate volunteers himself for the unimaginable Anna screams telling him that it is all her fault thus she should be the one. However, he does not listen and bravely accepts his fate. As he stands there, a trap door suddenly opens beneath his feet and Cade starts to hang, leaving Anna utterly helpless and devastated. Driven by an unyielding desire to save him, Anna screams at the hangman to take her life and spare him. As she screams and cries, the evil entity materializes right before her. In a cruel twist of fate, another trap door swiftly opens and Anna is also suspended, her life slipping away in a gut-wrenching turn of events. Tragically, after Anna's sacrifice, a shocking truth unfolds, revealing a web of deception. Several people wearing head covers approach the place. As they remove their covers, we see their faces. Among them are Victor, Lex, and even Cade's own parents, all revealed to be part of a conspiracy connected to the haunting Charlie challenge. Back at the gallows, the executioner helps Cade up and he removes his head cover. The noose around his neck seems to be connected to a safety belt holding his body up. In a shocking revelation, Kate approaches a hidden camera, exposing his true identity as almost famous 99, the true mastermind behind the unsettling online interactions with Anna. With an eerie proclamation, he declares the completion of their so-called perfect Charlie challenge and the movie ends. It turns out that poor Anna was lied to till the end. Sadly, she passed away not knowing that the person that she came to fall in love with used her as nothing more than a viral video prop.